I'm Dan Fabin with Fabin Brothers Farms, and the farm you see behind me was started by my grandfather when he returned from World War II. He had lived and grown up on the neighboring farm, and when he returned from the war, he purchased an adjacent land and started this farm. He started as, with a dairy farm, and when he started the, his retirement process in the late 80s and early 90s, we started to phase out of the dairy into grain operations. We've been planting cover crops for about 15 years on our farm. We knew that cover crops could help alleviate some of the erosion and allow us to do a better no-till system by having a controlled cover crop program. Uh, corn and soybeans are our primary crops and are our typical rotation, but I like to use wheat as a buffer every few years after our soybeans, as our, and those are our three main crops. However, we also grow some oats when practical and uh, rye as well. We grow our rye for our cover crop seed. Prior to planting corn here, we had crimson clover, which was our cover crop that we had planted after we harvested cereal rye the prior year. That cereal rye was used for our cover crop seed. We were able to plant into that crimson clover green, or as some people refer to as green manure. That is possible with our planting equipment where we have row cleaners, and a very um, precise and precision, we use precision equipment to monitor the planting job um, and also to make sure we're, we're doing a adequate job of planting. But the crimson clover was terminated and as it died off, our corn emerged through it and really had a very nice stand of corn behind that. that green manure and that thatch also helps to hold the moisture in early in the season when we were lacking some moisture. So as a result, our, our corn, even though we had a very dry summer and have not had a great corn harvest so far, um, our corn here did perform very well. We do use a vertical till machine to process some of our corn stalks, typically where we don't have a cover crop or where we got too late in the season to plant a cover crop and are left with uh, more residue on the surface. Prior to planting, we in the spring, we'll use a vertical till machine to process some of those stalks and again, make for a more uniform seed bed. However, we do find that uh, our earthworm population often helps us in that process. It's very encouraging when we go to the field and take a shovel and pull out a, a shovel full of dirt and see several earthworms in any scoop full you take pretty much anywhere on our, our field. So we know that there's a lot of um, biological activity under the soil and keep learning more and more every year about what's happening there and, and trying to better understand that so we can be work together with those natural organisms. It, we have noticed and I, we've been better at tracking in recent years the organic matter that's in the soil and watching that in our um, soil test and we do see that that number continues to increase year after year. So while we are harvesting material from the field, we're able to continue to add organic matter. And we attribute that to having something growing in the soil um, continuously and trying to keep something there for the, the organisms to rally around and, and benefit from. So we feel just the diversity in the soil adds to uh, the total soil health. So having something, especially in the strips that you see in the, the rolling hills of our area, 
also, besides better soil health, helps to control erosion. We really don't see erosion in this farm or uh, honestly, really any of our farms anymore because of the, the good soil structure that we have. It also allows us to possibly get in the field earlier in the spring and even in the fall where we're not having a, a compaction issue or um, turning up mud. We, we just tend to have a better soil recovery having, having had a no-till system for several years. So this past year when we had clover and good vegetation growing on these fields, we left some buffer strips between the corn and the soybeans that you see at the top of the hill. This allowed us for some controlled traffic that we can run our grain cart on and get around the fields without compact, compacting the field. But it also just gave us another buffer strip for any potential erosion to help control that. There's a diversion ditch that is part of our NRCS program and conservation program that is above the planter and above the soybean field there's a strip of clover that was left this past year after our cover crop and I use it as a, a controlled traffic lane and a buffer between those two fields. Well over time we continue to experiment with other cover crop species because we recognize that the diversity that's growing out there and helping to contribute to soil health is important. So trying to have a continuously green um, or some sort of grass or, or species of plant growing in the field and having it be controlled rather than a random weed population is important. So we try to um, research and, and learn about the, the new cover crop options. For example, this year is the first year that I'm growing um, annual ryegrass. And I recognize that the benefit is out there to help perhaps get deep, a deep root system and even alleviate some of the areas where we have experienced some compaction. So we experiment with um, various species and options that are available and as research uh, in, may indicate a potential benefit, we're willing to change and, and try different things. We have had people comment or ask why they see a sprayer in the field, for example, instead of a plow because they like to see the fresh dirt turned over in a in a field and like the smell of that dirt. And I do explain to them that um, often, for example, our sprayer is a multi-purpose unit. It, we do make a pass for a burn down typically in the spring, but then that sprayer also applies fertilizer and nitrogen often. So they may see it in different times um, actually feeding the plants to some extent rather than just straight chemicals but it is interesting and always a good conversation to have with people that um, feel the only way to farm is, is by a moldboard plow. Um, I explained to them the, the benefits of not having to put as much fuel into the machines and also the better control of runoff and, and erosion. And it's, um, to some people, it takes a little bit to understand and, and convince them of a no-till system, but it is often uh, a good conversation to have. And, and I think more and more people are understanding of and privy to the benefits of no-till in our area. For farmers who are interested in switching their operations to no-till and or with using cover crops, my advice is to have patience. It takes several years to get into a good no-till system, and it also takes several years to potentially understand and appreciate the benefits of cover crops. It's important to understand that 
you don't necessarily see the a visible return the first year or second year. It takes time for those below ground organisms to thrive and to really become beneficial and to co help complete the system.